So now, if you had a child four years ago, you ain't got no money, no job. So you, uh, when your child gets four years old, you find a music teacher. Teach him how to play the drums and bugle, nothing else. No piano, no saxophone. So that means all the way through grade school they playing, all the way through high school, in college, college. Hmm? There's 85 people on the football team, but 400 people in the band. You never had to worry about getting a college education. See how it works? See how it works? Now, if you had a son that was dumb or daughter that was dumb, always send them to college. Hmm? Why? They'll flunk out. But people don't ask you what college you graduated from, they say, what college you go to. So that child comes through and that embarrassment is not there when he's dating somebody. And her father says, what college you go to? Oh, you go to Notre Dame. Huh? See how simple it is? Huh? To, to, to get around the trick, because it ain't nothing but a trick. It's <laughs> so ignorant here. It's just the sadness of that. All them white folk got killed at the college. You believe that? Um, you believe Superman? I'm not asking you. You believe Superman? It's God. Here's a guy. Said he want to kill some Christians. Hmm? Wait a minute. A week early, all you had to do was come here. And, well, you shoot, you're going to get a Christian. There's millions of Christians came to see the Pope. You want Christians? Huh? Come to Philly. Huh? Mm -hmm. just, hmm? If I'd have been there and he said, Are you a Christian? What really? I said, What are you? Because I, I go, I won't be a Muslim. I got that for you too, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm? So then you stop and you think. Hmm? ISIS. Hmm? They don't need nothing else. These are white children killing white people. It's the anything they won't say about me, and we let them. Hmm? Hmm? They won't say. I'll come into school and get you, man, because you stole my bottle of wine, but I'm not coming there to shoot up everybody in the school. And we let them. And before they catch them, they say they're crazy. They're crazy. Then they show the blue women this beautiful sword. To have a white boy ever shot an ugly white woman? Huh? Every time I leave, the gorgeous, the most so and so, please. Huh? That's why they talk about the, what's the one that just changed herself into a woman? Caitlin. Yeah, well, he must have no mirrors in the house. Well, he started off being an ugly man. What make him think he's going to be a pretty woman? And that stuff you see on the magazine, that's about three and four hundred thousand dollar gowns. Mm, I got a frog can look good in that. <laughs> Two more movies. Uh, Straight Outta Compton. Did you go see it? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what, any thoughts about it? Were you a fan of no, it? No, it was just, no, it was just, I, I'm not a fan of no damn movie. No, of the scene of N.W.A. and what they stood for. Well, see, I didn't know none of that because I didn't listen to that. That was my first time seeing it. Okay. Huh? And I know here's a guy here. They say his son looked more like him than him who played it. He's a billionaire. Huh? Right. What, what, what interested me is they had the women shaking their ass and blah, 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 da, 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 but no drugs. Now, you know that's all they were was drugs. But that's the maturity. The maturity. I didn't know when, what's it, smoked cigars in jail now. Suge Knight. I didn't know he was on the scene. I just thought he was at a filling station. I didn't know they were shooting a scene mm -hmm. that looked like a filling station. I didn't know none of that. Mm -hmm. huh? Or when he, got, when he got ran over the guy or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so what happened is that movie came out on Thursday, not Friday, mm -hmm. and it made five times more money that Thursday, then it cost them to make it. Mm -hmm. But it was brilliantly put together, you know. And, and, and so I'm looking, but I didn't know because I didn't know about all the 
the background and all of that. Yeah, Straight Outta Compton was number one for three weeks. Yep, and then that, 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 that movie, uh, The War Room, right. took over. Took over. So I'd go see it because I was angry, man. I, I thought they was pulling some tricks. See, that's why I have to have some folks on my staff that's not hip because sometimes you can be so slick in their play to that. See, I'm thinking it's a jive white folks put a movie to knock that out. So when I go there and see all these black folks, exactly. and I'm the one that told the world the rhythm didn't change. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that much. Them black folks, all of them, top ones, should be nominated for Academy Award. They ain't never been in a movie before. Mm -hmm. That's when you know something. Mm -hmm. Never been in a movie. And the week after that, there was another black film that was number one, Perfect yeah. Guy. See, I didn't see that, but I saw people going to see it. Right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, but they, they made a big point. I, I got a little upset at that movie because it's, uh, it's a psychological thriller about a stalker boyfriend. Yeah. It's got three black characters, and then they, they, but they made a big point of saying, um, you know, this, this is not a quote-unquote black film. This is a, a a psychological thriller that has three black leads. Yeah, well, that's white folks and they bullshit. <laughs> Probably the most vicious, vicious, nasty thing was that giant punk thug, Cedric the Entertainer. Okay. When he did Barbershop. Mm. And said, King, nothing but a hoe. And Rosa Parks didn't do nothing big. She's just too tired to move her big, fat, black ass. A white script broke that for him. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Two months later, he's in the White House. Now, the president probably didn't know, mm. but he was there. Hmm? He's there because of this movement. Mm. But he didn't even understand if he would have called Queen Elizabeth a hoe, the nigga would be dead. Huh? Mm. If he would have called Mother Teresa a punk, he'd be dead. Mm. He can do that at our expense, mm. but the universe will. Mm. Well, Professor Woods, he had a question, like we're talking about what is black film, and he's and you, you mentioned Django as being an example of the best Black. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I haven't seen. Yeah. Django Unchained. Yeah, that you've seen. Yeah. But he said, like, would it have been? Would a black director been able to get that through the system? Like, would it have been the same thing if a black? Well, person see, I, when I go to move, I don't give a damn about that. They do anything they want to do, mm -hmm. huh? Anything they want to do, they do, huh? Mm -hmm. and damn thing you can do about it. Frank Sinatra, when he came out in the movie. <clears throat> Manchurian Canada. Yeah. They paid them $40 million to take it off the screen mm -hmm. for like 30 years. Right. And then when he got ready to come back on, Denzel, he didn't know the name of an actor. Mm -hmm. He did one, but it's altogether different. So if your child saw that one, they think they saw the real one. They mm -hmm. didn't. But as, as, form, as a form of social programming, we were talking about film and Seeing images, like you're saying in Jamaica, you got to see black people in power. Um, the images that we get to see of ourselves in movies, you know, is, is there a certain, uh, I, I want to say rhetoric, I don't know if that's right. Whatever we got out here now, we had when I was a little boy. So don't blame it on the movies. Okay. It's something in my head. Huh? Mm -hmm. Step and fetch it. What's the most filthy? But he was the number one pimp in the history of America. He had 40 Bentleys, mm. a thousand white holes, and couldn't nobody touch him. Hmm? Mm. Yeah. He made more money than anybody in Hollywood, black mm. or white. Why? Because I went to move because it's the major, major, major hot thing going on the planet. And I went to see a black man. Mm -hmm. Care what he was doing, I know it ain't true. Mm -hmm. 
but white folks didn't know it until you got white folk came out <laughs> to see him tighten up their stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And we just came out to see a, a black man. Right. So now watch this now. So he had a wardrobe boy, boy. Nobody ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. So the white guy was taking care of and ironed his shirt. I said, I just thank you so much. So Steph said, but how long have you been in town? I said, I've been here like six months. So what you want to do? Said, I want to be a movie star. He said, you talk to anybody? He said, give me that notebook here. I'll give it right back. Here. He says, I'll write to the president of the company. He'll see you. He said, by the way, what's your name? He said, John Wayne. Mm -hmm. Huh? I've heard that story. John Wayne. I've heard okay. that story. So now, Stephen Petras in Chicago broke in the county hospital. Mm -hmm. County hospital. Free hospital. John Wayne gets his private jet, go pick him up, take him to Michael Reese, one of the most expensive hospitals mm -hmm. on the planet. And he dies. And his son got to looking at the old film. Mm -hmm. Got drunk, got in the car, and drove off a cliff. Mm -hmm. His son. Well, one of his sons shot up a highway. And, uh, well, you do all kind of crazy things. Yeah. You know, when you come from that kind of stock. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I'm saying that was the movie. The images being exposed to those images, seeing what this father later you, you can't move time back, right? Of you course, move time back, of course. You see, what they did with Malcolm X was the most beautiful power. Mm -hmm. I go on college campus, man, and the white folks had them X's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they come out with a movie called The X Factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to get you away from the Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. Gotta be real clever. See that? Mm -hmm. The X Files. He had to smoke. Mm -hmm. X Files. X Files, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the so they do the, the movie on Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Whew. I said, they're getting ready to take Malcolm down. Mm -hmm. He's already dead. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we, us, was only introduced to Malcolm when he was talking good shit to our white folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We never saw him as a pimp and a hustler in Detroit Red. Once that went in my head, he couldn't be my hero no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. I never saw the other. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Stomping women and all that. I see that? They know what they're doing. That, I think. He, now, James Baldwin, he wanted to do a Malcolm X script in the 60s. Do, do, are you familiar with that? No, or you no. I love Baldwin, though. Baldwin. <laughs> talk, talk about him for a second. Well, he's just his intellect. Just his intellect, man. When you sit and talk with him, you realize you have sit in the presence of royalty, man. Mm -hmm. James Baldwin. Funny. Love me, man. Love me. Michael Jackson, huh? A child. His mind was a child. Mm. Hmm? Came one of the most powerful human beings in the world, and they killed him. See, we were beating the man. And so I call it rioting in the movie theater because this was rioting without destroying anything. 